MLB is planning to return in late June. Ready um, for this, man. They are talking about playing in home stadiums with a realigned league. Now, have you seen about this? No, I haven't seen the realigned league, and I haven't really heard much of this. This came out today, right? This, Yeah, this came out today. Yeah, um, so I, yeah, I, yeah I like, like, like actually an weekend hour ago. to watch draft stuff. Today I woke up and I went to work. Bob Nightingale from USA Today. He said, maybe it's a dream scenario. Maybe it's premature to get excited. Then again, maybe it just might work. Major League Baseball officials have become cautiously optimistic this week that the season will start in late June and no later than July 2nd, playing at least 100 regular season games, according to three executives with knowledge of the talks. They requested anonymity because the plan is still under consideration. Not only would baseball be played, but it would be played in their own Major League ballparks, albeit with no fans. MLB is considering a three-division, 10-team plan in which teams play only within their division, a concept that is gaining support among owners and executives. It would abolish traditional American and National Leagues, realign the divisions based on geography. The plan... I say regional, right? It's all regional. All regional. It makes traveling that much easier. one team that pisses everybody off is Seattle because they're way the hell up there away from everybody. Yep. The uh, the plan, pending approval of medical experts and providing the COVID-19 testing is available to the public, would eliminate the need for players to be in isolation and allow them to still play at their home ballparks while severely reducing travel. The divisions would keep many of the natural rivals together while playing one another before an expanded playoff format. Here's a look at the possible realignment structure. All right, so in the East, you would have the Yankees and Mets, Red Sox, Nationals, Orioles, Phillies, Pirates, Blue Jays, Rays, and Marlins. So all East Coast. Yep. In the West. And, and for the most part, all up North other than the two Florida teams. Yes. In the I'm actually West. really shocked that the two Florida teams are up there. I know. It's a long travel, but... I mean, they are still drive. on the same coast. All of those other teams, you could drive all of that on a bus in a few hours. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, if you got planes, I mean, all these teams have planes. So okay, true. All right, true. true. All right, so in the West, Dodgers and Angels, San Francisco Giants, Oakland Athletics, uh, the Padres, the Diamondbacks, the Rockies, the Rangers, the Astros, and the Mariners. So all of those out West. I was a little surprised to see Houston in that, but... When you look at the the central division, it kind of changes things up. In yeah, the central, Houston's just so far away from everybody else, anyway. Yeah, it, it was it was I mean, weird. They're way they're way closer to Arlington than they are St. Louis, and that's yeah. probably the next closest team to them. I thought they might have done like maybe Kansas City out, west, but even that's a I mean that's a haul. Um, it's pretty pretty big. Yeah. So in the central, they've got the Cubs, the White Sox, the Brewers. Cardinals, Royals, Reds, Indians, Twins, Braves, and Tigers. Uh, now, the Braves and Milwaukee are forever away from each other. But I think this does make a lot of sense. Uh, what he said is it's too early to co- or to expound on the details uh, with new ideas floated each week. It's also not known whether teams would have to open the season in Arizona, Florida, and Texas for several weeks before everyone could return to the home stadiums. Yet they could squeeze in 100 to 110 games and perhaps even have several thousand fans in attendance before or during the playoffs. Uh, One of the officials said, I'm very optimistic it's all coming together. Uh, One of the additional benefits to playing in Major League Cities is it would alleviate a possible split among players who are opposed to playing the entire season in Arizona, Florida, and Texas. Several high-profile players, including the Angels Mike Trout and the Dodgers Clayton Kershaw, expressed strong resistance to playing the season away from their families, which is exactly what you and I had discussed before. Now, you didn't think it'd be a problem. I thought some of these guys were, were not going to be happy about that. But Once they leave their ass at home. Yeah, but uh, you, you don't want to have a season without Clayton Kershaw and Mike Trout. I mean, it's not that they're <laughs> worth a, a whole lot anyway. Every year of our life without Mike Trout. That's true. <laughs> Show up and play ball, boy. Yeah. Uh, now, they don't have very many discussions going on about the financial ramifications about playing without fans. But, um, I mean, they're, they're discussing, like, players taking pay cuts, uh, all, all kinds of different stuff. This is um, this is very likely. I mean, this is, there's a whole lot that's going on here. Um, one of the executives said, this is going to be a season like we've never seen, but that's fine. At least it's a season. I, what are your thoughts here? What, what do you, what do you I, feel? I, I really hope this happens. Now, I, I have become more optimistic through this simply because over the last couple of weeks, I stayed away from all the coronavirus stuff for several weeks and kind of poking in and out of the news a little bit. And then not this past weekend, 
but last week I kind of started, I kind of got myself back into it and I was reading some things and, and I stay away from a lot of news media, uh, TV news media, c- c- cable news, just because I don't, everybody's got a political agenda and it's really hard to figure out what you're doing. So I started reading up on doctors. Okay. Cause these are the only people that I actually give a shit about what their opinion is. All right. At least when it comes to this. Yeah. yeah well, yes. Okay. When it comes to this, well, no, I thought that was clarified, but yes. Um, I, I think these people are getting a handle on this virus. Now, v- vaccines, no, not yet. We're getting close. It seems like, but that's a long, long con at the end of the day. Basically, what we have to get to is we have to get this to where if and when you catch this, we can give you medicine for it and and you'd be fine. Yeah. And it'd be just like the common cold. It'd be just, I'm not saying it is like, the, but it becomes like those things once we get medical treatments because we're not having a problem with too many people on ventilators. We're able to treat this thing better today than we were five weeks ago. Yeah, 100%. And, and, and people are still catching it. And then they're getting better from it, A, much faster than they used to. And the medicine seems to be working. And you've got a couple of different doctors around the country and around the world even that are trying different medical combinations of treatment. And and that's what we need because then it doesn't matter if – it doesn't matter if you get it or not. I mean, I literally heard a doctor say, if we can get the treatment down – to where it works and we have confidence and faith in it, then we realistically want everybody to open back up. This is not an economical thing. This is not a common thing. We want everybody to catch it. Yeah. Just like we Herd want immunity. everybody to catch it. And, and, then, and then we can fight it. And then once your body had it and we fought it, then your, your, your immune system is stronger f- against it. And toward, it's just like the flu. It's just like the cold then. And, and and we are stronger together. And I don't understand any of that. That's all way outside it's, of my it, realm of expertise. So it's or the, the I herd immunity. It. It's exactly what you said. Once, okay. It, once you I, have I, it. I don't know. I didn't know that that's what that's called. I, and yeah. So, but I just, I just think there has to be some, I trust scientists. I trust doctors. I, I do. It's and basically I, look at it like this. Um, what, once it enters your body, it's something that your body has never seen before. So it doesn't know how to fight it. Right. That's right. But once you've had it, it's it's like your immune system has a memory, yep, and it realizes what it is if it comes back in, and it knows how to fight it going forward. Now the human body I, I, is so I do complex know that, that, that it's dangerous, know. and I do know that yes. it has killed people, and it's gonna probably continue to kill people. And and we what they've done find... the research on is that it is, it it's ninety eight percent of the people that re- it really affects that end up with critical issues, and it may be even more than ninety eight percent. Um, that's it. That's a number I've seen thrown around. Yeah, it, it's ninety-eight yeah, percent of them are people that have underlying health issues. That's right. So if you are, you know, reasonably healthy, you're going to be fine. You know, and it's that's way different than what we talked about before because obviously it, we didn't know what to say. Not just reasonably healthy, and you're going to be fine. If you're not reasonably healthy and you catch this, we have a treatment. Yeah, and yeah. it's okay. And it's okay. It's not going to kill you. Now it's something that we're going to watch you closer. And we don't want you to get it, but if you get it, we have a way to treat you and it's going to be okay. Yeah. This is, this is what we have to get it to. I trust that we'll have that, but by the end of the summer, no doubt. I just trust that our medical science is working on these things. I, I do. I believe in them. Um, as much as we bitch and complain about things that we are bad at in our country, I, I still believe that we have some of the best, brightest, and smartest people working on these things all the time. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's it. If if Major League Baseball comes back in late June, yeah, we've already got the PGA we'll coming back. We'll have fans in the stands by the end of September. Yeah, I, I believe that. Um, Hundred percent. We'll have fans in the stands by the end of September. Now, it, this is a little off topic. The NCAA came out yesterday and uh, highly suggested that college football players have at least a six week training period before coming back to play. We we talked about that with Huey. That yeah. that 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 needs to happen. Yeah, and I think it will. Now it, it hasn't they haven't had the full meeting to say, hey, we are going to do this. Well, that's um but, it, but that's going know, to be in they effect. Need, before college sports, amateur sports start really looking at this stuff, they need definitive answers medically on what's happening. 
because these are amateurs. I don't give a damn about your state money. I don't care about your school or your programs or any of this stuff. These are still amateurs. And if you're not going to, I'm more willing to tell professional players, get out there and mix it up. If we can make it safe for you, because these are highly compensated individuals. Yeah. And there's only like 30 teams in the NCAA. There are much hundreds, much smaller. Everybody's able to be controlled and, and, and you're highly compensated for the inconvenience that we're, if we ask you to leave your family for three months, heaven forbid we do that. Yeah. Okay. We, we, you, you get to, you make millions of dollars a year to play a game. At the end of the day, that's what you do. And I'm okay with that. I've never been one to throw their money at them. But when you start saying, I don't want to leave my mansion in Malibu for the four seasons in Scottsdale, I kind of want to tell you to, to, to go get fucked. <laughs> I don't care. I don't I'm, care. I'm with, you. I'm with you. I understand. Uh, you ready to talk football? Come on. <laughs> 